Hi. Hi. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. Good. Yeah, I want to I hold an umbrella. You do that. That's right. We can hear you too. So I guess if you want to go first or you want me to give you a few minutes to get where you need to go and then you jump in. Hi, John. I'm fine. Thank you. We'll give her a few minutes. <laughs> How's everyone going this way? I'm going to mute you, Katie. Just, um, oh no, maybe I better not wait. Katie, I'm going to mute you, honey. Awesome. Okay, so Katie can probably hear. I've got her muted. Oh, she's, she can see me. Um, I've got you muted, Katie. Okay, do you want to be muted or unmuted, Katie? Hello. Katie, if you can hear me, I'm going to mute you, honey. Okay. All right, so, team, how are we going this week? Where's everyone up to? Um, I'm going good. I've been really, really good with my food. Mm -hmm. um, I have to admit, I've been very, very lazy with working out. Um, my anxiety has been really high. So when my anxiety is high, I don't want to do anything. But yeah, I've been eating and I've been playing with the kids a lot more and I've been eating a lot better. But yeah, I haven't been working out and that's really, really bad. And I know I should do it. And I sit here and I'm like, I need to get up and I need to work out and I just can't make myself do it. But I've what if that. you just get up to go for a walk? Yeah, I've been parking like the car away from school further. So we have to walk in more. So I'm forcing myself to do little things like that. Mm -hmm. But like to actually do a workout, I'm struggling. But I'll get there. I'll force myself. I've got to sit here one day and just be like, I'm going to do it. And I'm just going to get up and I'm going to do it. Do you play music while you're at home? Sometimes. Hmm. Sometimes that can really help to shift the mood. And, and change your energy and, and allow you to step into a space of feeling better. Yeah. And being more motivated. Yeah. Like if it's, if it's any help, like I know that a lot of the time I listen to a lot of motivation, a lot of programs, a lot of um, podcasts and whatnot. So it depends how my frame of mind is. If I'm wanting to learn, I'll just be about learning. Then other times I'll realize I'm really demotivated. So the last week and a half- Shana, can I've you hear me? Can now, yep. I'm having real troubles with this connection. We've got at home. Oh, I don't know if you I can were stay on. I can't hear a thing. Oh, that's okay. Yeah, all right. If you can hear me now, you're good. I had you muted a second ago because there was a heap of background noise your end. You've just muted yourself. Cool. You're still muted. Tap your screen. No, she's gone. Um, okay, so... Yeah, so I know that when I'm demotivated, you'll see me listening to dance music constantly because I'm like, okay, what can I do this morning to keep me going? And it just shifts that mood a little bit because things can get really hard yeah. and daunting. It's very easy to stay stuck in that energy. So just have a think and be like, all right, what are the things I, I know I can do to motivate myself? Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. I think that dance music is a really good idea. I know for me, usually when I get up in the morning, I turn on this easy listening kind of music and I spend an hour or two just kind of being soft around the house and getting hydrated and, you know, organized, whatever. But uh, if I feel myself uh, resistant to like, like starting my movement or, or, or getting ready for something I don't want to get ready for or that sort of thing. Then I put on, um, you know, maybe my uh, 60s music or something, Chubby Checker or something like that. And, um, and, it, and it does. It helps me a lot. Mm, it makes a big difference. Katie, have you tried 
No, she's gone. She's giving me signals of she can't hear. Yeah. <laughs> I'm wondering if she's pressing that audio button when you log in. Anyway, okay, yeah. So, I mean, the music is a big trigger for a lot of us and all of us that are on the line should be deeply affected by music. Music. Um, I'd also want to know at the moment what's demotivating you. Like, um, can you think of with your priorities as a diplomat, how's your environment at home? Is, is everything kind of organised or is everything a bit chaotic? Um, everything is pretty good. The thing I'm struggling with most since I've been eating, as you know, I've put on weight and I think that's what's killing me is... I'm putting on weight and I can't handle it. Sorry, my anxiety is out of control because of that sort of thing. And then I just feel unmotivated. And I know the only way I'm going to lose it is by getting up and doing stuff. But mm -hmm. I'm a walking contradiction. And I know, but I can't get myself out of my head enough. Mm. And the kids are stressing me. Apart from that, everything okay. else is fine. The kids always stress me though. That that's nothing new. Yeah, yeah. So it's remembering that the um the weight gain will happen because you're eating effectively and the body's still yeah. going through that trust process. Um the other thing I always like to do, because diplomats is very, very, very common for us to do this, very common to lose motivation and um and put on a bit of weight because we're sensual beings and we want the food to feel the emotion. So my question would be is, uh, you're doing pretty good with the food, but is there something you feel like you are suppressing at the moment that you're not expressing emotionally? Quite possibly. Maybe you need to journal or ring a friend and have a good vent. Yeah. You're energetically blocked right now. It's not the food. It's not the motivation of doing something. Something you're yeah. not expressing is blocking you from actually doing this. Yeah. Um, that makes a lot of sense. Cool, 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 cool. <laughs> um, and maybe it is actually referencing the invasion meditation. I've got to find a new word for that. But anyway, um, is um, use that in the other way around. So okay. instead of going into your house, I'm knocking at your door and you're now introducing me to each of the people around you. You know, introducing okay. me to your husband. What do I think about your husband? What's, what do I notice about your husband? What's the relationship between you and your husband? You're now introducing me to your cousin. You're now introducing me to your mother. You're now introducing me to your father. And sit there mm -hmm. and just nut out each of the persons and just imagine I'm standing beside you and you're introducing me and you're telling me about who they are and what your relationship is like. Yeah. And just feel into what's the stuck emotions that are sitting there. What's the animosity? What's the judgment? Just get around that. And, um, oh, this is how do, I go, how do I go about that one if it's unfortunately, and I hate saying it, it's towards my children? Oh, okay, great. It's to people because I feel more judged from people when it comes to my children. Why? Because I feel like maybe I'm not a good enough parent. Um, are they going to find this annoying? Are they going to... Um, my kids are very, very social and they'll talk to everyone, which I think is fantastic, but they also have no boundaries and they don't know where the line is. And I've been trying to work on it, but like, I'll tell them something or like Mackenzie this morning, I said, we've got to go to the dentist because she's got an issue with her baby teeth and her adult teeth are growing behind. And we walk into class and she's telling every man and his dog. And I'm like, you don't need to tell people that. Like, it's not something that you need to go and tell. But, yeah, I know just little things like that. And that irks me. But I know she's excited about things like that. So it's like I yep. don't want to block her from it or Brady from being him or Mackenzie being her. But at the same time, I'm like, she need, like they need to learn that there's a line of things that not everyone needs to know everything. Why do you believe that? I don't know. Because I guess that's conditioned through our life that not everyone wants to know everything about you. What do you do as a job? Hairdresser. Mm -hmm. What do you get told every day? Everything about everybody. Mm -hmm. So do you judge your clients? No. No. So why would you expect others to judge? Do you judge your clients? There was a, there was a, there was a tone in that. I don't judge people 
per se, but I feel like I'm always judged. Exactly. There's a disconnect yeah. in that because it's total yeah. bullshit. Like your children, you should be looking at them and being like, oh, look at what I'm forgetting. Yeah. Children are playful and they have no filter and they have no judgment. You've yeah. got it back to front, babe. Your children are here to teach you a fucking lesson. Yeah. To stop caring so much because you've already said you're judgmental of the weight you're putting on. You're judgmental of the way your people perceive your children, then for, therefore perceive you. There's a heap of judgment going on there. That's all I'm hearing. Yeah. But you're judging you before you're judging everybody else. Yeah. Stop it. And I hate being, I hate it and I hate people judging because I don't judge people. Like everyone's their own self and all of that. And, you know, you've got to love everyone for who they are. So I don't judge people in any sense of anything because I don't think it's right. But I don't know. I feel like everyone out in the world is so judgy that I'm always like, what are they thinking of me? What are they thinking of my kids? What are they thinking of this? What are they thinking of that? How much of your but day yeah. do you think you, you, how much of your day do you feel like you're feeling those emotions? Oh, a lot. 10%, yeah, 20%? Like 80%. Cool. How much energy do you think that's taking up? A lot. How much energy do you think's left over for you and your children? Not a lot. Maybe like 20%. Mm. you're in an industry where you hear how judgmental people are but the truth of it yeah. is is you can't control what people do and don't think and yeah. i kind of did a big live last night on this i love the way everything just kind of lines up but i did a big live on this if i could go back to my 11 year old self right now what would be the message you looking at yourself right now talking to your children the pain the time that you're wasting the energy you're wasting the emotions that you're wasting do you want your children to have that? Or if you were to turn to your children right now, reflecting on how you're feeling right now, do you want your children to feel this for their life? No. No. And that's why Sorry. I don't tell them off a lot about those things because I don't want them to perceive that everyone's it's judging wrong. them. Exactly. Yeah. If I could go back to my 11-year-old self right now, I'd tell her to be more playful and not give a fuck what people think. If you want to wear odd socks and wear a pink tutu and a bright freaking headband with your head pulled up in bobbles, go for it. Do yeah. you and do it so well because that's freedom. And as adults, we have so much that gets pushed upon us that we forget to be playful and be happy. And your children, parents that choose to have children, people that choose to have children, are given a gift of remembering what innocence and the truth of life actually is. Yeah. We got it back. We got it wrong. We got a whole life of conditioning. Yeah. So my work for you is where are you judging yourself? What exactly are you judging yourself on? And ask yeah. yourself, is it true? So what are you judging yourself on the most? What's the state? Let's do, are you willing to do the work? We're going to do four questions right now. Sure. Okay. What's your biggest judgment of yourself? To do with your children. That was the one you brought up. To do with my children. That I'm mm -hmm. not the best mum I can be. And is that true? Not necessarily. Not necessarily? No, because I think parents are always growing and learning, but no parent is ever perfect. No, I'm perfect. Perfect. So okay. I'm not perfect but then I do have a lot of growth that I could do. Such is life. You're a wonderful human having a human experience. Yeah. How do you think you act when you believe that you're not a good mum? I get stressed out and then I just go into my shell. And how do you think that makes you behave as a mum? How does that, how do you then show up as a mum? Oh, I'm worse. I'm 10 times worse. And is that serving you? No. How's that affecting your children? I'm not spending the time with them because I get frustrated with myself, so I lock myself away because it's easier. And then what do your children do as a response? Muck around. Yep. And then yep. how do you then feel about that? Frustrated. Yeah, it's a vicious circle. Yeah. So 
how do you think you would be as a mum, as yourself, as a human, if you didn't think that thought? How would you show up? How would you parent? I'd be there a lot more and just not worry about anything. Everything would go feel? a lot smoother. Yeah. So it's our own it's our own thoughts, it's our own beliefs that, that cause us the greatest pain. Mm-hmm. So the belief that you are not a good mum, is that true? No. No, you're doing the best you can with what you've got right now. Yeah. So let's rewire that and look at how can I do what I want to be doing? I want to be more present with my kids. I want to be more playful with my kids. I want to be a better mum to my kids. I want to do more things for myself so I feel better, so I feel better for them. Yeah. So... I want you, your homework is I want you to write me a paragraph of how you're a great mum and what you're going to do to be a great mum. Okay. How am I a great mum? What do I do as a great mum? Yeah. What do I need to do for me to be the great mum? Um, it'd be great if you put some music on while you're doing this. Yeah. Put yourself into a state. You've got emotions there and I know how much you control yourself and your emotions and how you show up. If you could find a window of time in your day, if there's a song, someone's there, I can see. If there's a, um, if there's a song that really gets you emotional, I dare you to play it. Get into that mood and feel into it because if you don't feel into this you're going to continue to lie to yourself and you're going to continue to sabotage yourself so you need to find a way to be in that mood fake it till you make it sit in the car and drive somewhere at the park and put the song on the way there until you feel that emotion and sit in it write out your current state of who you think you are as a mum, and then what you actually want because until you get real with it and you actually really embrace it you're going to keep lying to yourself and staying busy in avoidance rather than actually facing it and feeling it. And we're meant to feel it. We're not meant to keep being busy and, 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 and getting sidetracked and pushing past it. Yeah. You're going to hate me for this, but you'll love me eventually. <laughs> I will. But it's like yeah. the Band-Aid. Get it done quick. Get it done. Don't fester yeah. on it. Just get it done. You've got 24 hours okay. to have it to me. Okay. Yeah. All right. 20 press, because I know otherwise you'll be like, I don't want to do it at yeah. all. It scares the shit out of me, but okay. Yeah, and that's your that's your safety, right? Because I've heard this before. Yeah. yeah. I want you to drop some of this, honey, because your shoulders are so tight. It's blocking your heart. It's blocking yeah. your playfulness. I know that you are a spunky ass, playful human. And when you allow yourself to take on board everybody else's beliefs and expectations and bullshit, the fun, beautiful, bubbly, out there Shanae vanishes and becomes imprisoned in the prison that yeah. you create. Yeah. No one does anything to you unless you allow it. And I think I've allowed it far too long. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I think each one of these, we're probably going to have another one of these you're going to be doing because <laughs> there's a lot of situations that you're taking on that aren't serving you and they're robbing you of being happy. Yeah. Your lack of motivation, a diplomat's lack of motivation comes from too many things that are outside of us in our environment that we believe to be a, a, a thing and they're not. Yeah. Thank you for sharing so beautifully openly. Thank you. <laughs> Back. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Through pain comes growth. Through pain comes evolution. And yeah. how's everything else going though? Apart from that, everything's pretty good. I'm awesome. excited. I'm doing the Relay for Life on the weekend. So that should be good. Family time so and walking for 19 hours straight. Woohoo! 
So wow. there goes all that. You're worried about weight loss and things like that. I'm not motivated. I'm just going to go do 19 hours and just kill myself. Yeah, <laughs> but I'm with my family. There's like 15 family members all doing it. So it'll be good. Yeah. Good. Good. So you're yeah. doing it for everyone else and with everyone else. Yeah. Yeah. We're doing it for my what? grandfather and then we're doing it all together. So it's, yeah. It's what good. do diplomats love? I don't know. Can you remember? No. I don't think I looked at that part because I was with the sensor and sensor. then I switched. And, yeah. Diplomats love to be heard and be a part of the herd. Yeah. So that real life yeah. for life. That's why I said to you, who can you call and have a vent to? Because I feel like you need someone that's non-judgmental to have to hold the bucket for you. Yeah. Get it all out, then go move your body. Ideally for you, the best thing would be to go walking with a friend and vent it to your friend. Yeah, mum and I are going walking every night now because awesome. mum wants to lose weight. So perfect. Yeah. Should be Perfect. good. So that's all you really need to be doing is remembering you just need more time to be heard. And if your environment is good, you're allowing the judgment to block you. Okay. Yeah. That's all it is. Well, yeah. layer number one. <laughs> just one layer. We've got many more. Oh, because our onions? Shanae is an onion. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. She's got to be able to reference Shrek. Shrek yeah. is a wonderful yeah. movie. I'm going to okay. go tell my husband that I'm an onion and he's just going to laugh at me and go, what the? <laughs> oh, God. That Chana, she's a weirdo. <laughs> Never. Never. Okay. Never. Angela. We're not weird. We're just crazy. We're just crazy. It's just, it yeah. comes in the Riverland thing. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Oh, and are you, where are you up to with the weeks? Are you up to week five or six? six? You. Yeah. And that's this week's project? Yeah, so I'm finished? doing the, the self-love. Yeah. Perfect conversation for that week. Mm -hmm. Brilliant. Brilliant, brilliant, brilliant. Okay, she's up to self-love. <laughs> Excellent. And then... Yeah, great. So then I'll um the next week will be put up this week, a little bit later this week. Okay. Cool. Yay. Yay. Anything else that pops up, jump in and let me know. Well, yeah, I will do that. Thank you. Angela, how are you? Well, I'm pretty good. Um those four the four questions she started out with Shanae, those were Byron Katie's, right? They are. I love yeah. Byron Katie's work. Yeah. Yeah, that's cool. It's yeah. really good at reflecting and pulling yourself back into understanding what you're believing and how that's allowing you to show up. Mm -hmm. And then to get in that and then be able to go, oh, so that's one paradigm. But if I actually come back and look at that, there's this whole other paradigm over here that I'm denying myself that actually feels so much better, that actually looks so much better. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. How are you? Well, right now I'm hurting a whole lot. <laughs> I don't know if you can, oh. see, can you see all of this. I mean, it's terrible. Oh. You know? And this is so sore. This sore, so sore. I'm on day 14. It's a 20 day treatment. So, scares yeah. me so much. Scares you? Because mm, mm. they're just full on treatments. It's what? It just it's just such a full on treatment. It just it what it perplexes me. Um just how full on they are with what it does to the body. Yes, well that's because uh because I had um three or four very suspicious spots on me and it's a and rather than the first thing, diving in and cutting into it, or either a biopsy or a scrape or, or you know, whatever, or she said, let's try this treatment first and see if we can pull it out with the screen, with the screens. Scrape. 
Yep. So this is, uh, you know, just going into the third epidural layer, I think, uh, the second or the third, anyway. Uh, it doesn't go deeper than that, and it just pulls the toxins out. That's what, and then they fester, and then they scab over and fall off, and they're gone. That's wow. the point. That's the point. So, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, you know, she's keeping up with me. I'm sending her pictures every four or five days, and she says it's it's the way it should be, and you know. Just now, just the last couple of days, starting to really hurt, and I've decided that this week um, I've just canceled everything. I don't want to try mm -hmm. to put on makeup and put on clothes that are and and go out. You know, it's just it's a pain. So uh, I didn't have very much, but I even canceled my tango, my two tango classes, and my Toastmasters class, and you know. Plus, I just don't want to go out and have people say, oh, what's going on with you? Yeah. Uh, yeah. So, I mean, and that's the good news um, because um, I've been sort of backing off these 14, these 14 days. The first five or six days, there was nothing. There was nothing that showed and nothing that hurt and, you know, and um, so it, it's been... Uh, it's been really good because I've just been sort of backing off and uh, getting into um, the now, you know, what, what, is, what is pleasant, uh, what is here, and it's also a time for, um, when, I don't know if you're into astrology, but the planet Mercury goes, um, retrograde three times a year and we're in one of those um, movements right now and that's a good time to just sort of back off and do planning but don't run forward and make decisions and do things and you know buy your airplane ticket and you know that kind of thing um, and so it's a, a quieter time and um, so it matches with that and actually you know i've been feeling very good uh personality wise or mentally or whatever you want to say you know like morning i feel clear and uh, and i can just do what i want because i don't have any appointments i don't have to say oh my gosh you know in half an hour i have to be somewhere or this or that and um you know, and I, I told you my sauna showed up, and, you know, it's only um, seven weeks late, but, um, you know, it showed up, and and so, you know, I was just fine with that, you know, one piece, there were six cartons, and one came, and two or three days later, one came, and, you know, a week that's later. It's really awesome to have a spa at home, that's wonderful. <laughs> Yeah, that's really great. And so I've got my um, handyman coming tomorrow and we're going to put it together. I won't be able to use it until I get out of this skin treatment, you know, but um, anyway. So. Okay. so how are we feeling with food? So how are we going with your food and distension at the moment? Well, um, it's less. It's less. Um, it's noticeably less. But it's and what still, do you think that's from? Um, well, for one thing, I talked to my doctor in Albuquerque uh, by phone um, a week or two ago, and he, and I had stopped taking my uh, glutathione and, and glutamine, and he said, it sounds like your SIBO is back, and that's one of the main things. There's two things. I was taking the Ibergast. And I started again on the glutamine, and within two or three days of that, you know, it had evened out. And I, I don't have so much of the gas and stuff. Um, I'm also, you know, timing my meals, keeping my eating within a window of 10 in the morning to 7 at night. Um, and uh, I think that's helping. I just wrote you a, a note of 
few hours ago, you probably haven't seen it yet about portions. I don't, um, I think portions are probably the next thing I should address. Um, yeah. I, I don't know really how to do that. I mean, I've never been a calorie counter and uh, no. I, I, don't, I don't know. I sent you one picture of my two o'clock meal today, which is my largest meal. And I had yeah. some, some mixed vegetables that included uh, a small potato cut up, you know, and uh, stir fried with some chicken okay so your question is how do i know if it should be one egg or not so remembering to always come back to your food list and check the portion sizes in the food list do you do you know how to do that or would you love me to show you no i, I don't know there's a portion size no i don't know that right. awesome i love these questions right let me just log into it all right uh, can you log into my, into my profile? Can you log into my profile? Yeah, yeah, I can probably do that. Let me log out of here. And these are the sorts of things, guys. If you have any questions about your app and, and wondering these sorts of questions, these are brilliant questions, Angela. Absolutely brilliant. So breakfast between 7 and 8, brunch between 8 and 10, morning tea if you want between 10 and 12, lunch, afternoon snack, be active, dinner. So more food in the morning, less in the afternoon. Now, if you have a look here, uh, let's go eggs, egg. Okay, so here may be a problem or a thing for consideration. So you can always check out what are my proteins that I'm eating and how frequently should I be having it. So okay, if you hover over okay, it says it benefits you to have once a week or less. Okay, yes. I, yes, I've done that. I know yep. that. And then average and portion here on the side. Chicken eggs, 20 grams. 20 grams. 30 grams. 33 grams. No, no, that's egg white. Chicken eggs. Oh, sorry, chicken eggs. Yep, oh, yep. 20 oh, grams. 20 grams. Now, what is 20 grams? I mean, what do I, do I weigh an egg? I don't, I don't. You can actually, each of the boxes normally tells you how many grams per egg. What box? On the box, do you guys get eggs over there in cartons that have a lid or are they just in an open tray? No, open tray. Okay. Farm fresh, you just pick out the eggs you want, and put them in a sack and take them home. <laughs> okay, so generally it's saying that one egg white is roughly 30 grams. So you would be able to have one small whole egg per portion once a week. Okay. That's for a large egg. So you want a small egg and you'd be able to have the whole egg. Where, where, where so do this you says one large egg equals yeah. this. So I would assume that a small egg, how many grams is one? Small. So it's 42 grams in the shell. Peewee egg. <laughs> it's a peewee egg. <laughs> like a quail egg. <laughs> yeah, I think it is. I think it's those little tiny birds. Oh, my gosh. So one small egg per week. Okay, yeah, I'm only doing... Uh, I'm only doing eggs once a week, but I usually do two eggs. Mm. So there we go. So it's always just checking in with how, what are the actual requirements in the food list and how my portion size is coming up. Okay. So that's only under the specific food. Oh no, it's under the list as well here. Like, yeah, all like, of them have got a portion size. Oh, nibs. It says, um, average portion, 28 grams. That would be per day, right? 
Yep, per serve, which you can have these every single day if you wish. Yes, and that probably means one serving per day, right? Yep, I mean, one I serve per day. I, I don't want them three meals a day every day of the week, right? No. Okay. No. Okay, I've never, I've never noticed that over there. Oh, and there's calories too. I know. I don't know anything about calories. So. The only time I ever do calories is calorie counting with someone to ensure they're eating enough food or someone who has a really poor diet to actually give them that shock of understanding how calorie dense the poor choices are that they're making. Ah. So, I mean, it is something that if you're like worried about how much you're consuming, if you're putting on a bit of weight, like Shanae, if you wanted to, you probably could look at what you're eating at the moment. If you wanted to have a bit of a, like, a, and I'd only allow you to do it for a month maximum is downloading my fitness pal and using my fitness pal to log your foods and see the calories in which you are actually consuming, um, which can give you an idea of what's actually going on. I generally don't use it because most people, if you are only eating off of this food list, you're fine. If you're eating crap and muffins and breads and biscuits and crumb things and um, things in between, then you've got to worry. But if you're just eating whole foods all day, every day, then I say go for gold with whatever the food is. It's probably not the food that's causing the weight gain. Yeah, I don't eat a lot of crap. So it's basically just what's on my food list. I may have like cauliflower. I know it says only once or twice a week. I may do that three times if I'm lucky, depending on what I'm eating. But I didn't think that would throw it out that much. No. So it's no, it's no, either no. my portion size or it's like you said, it's just my body reacting to the stress. Yeah, it'll be outdoor stress. Um, so Katie, we just quickly went over, Angela didn't realize that there's actually portion sizes in the food list. Um, and that, um, we're just talking about how things are to be eaten once per day. Generally, if they're in the excellent list and you want to eat it twice in that day, go for gold. Um, I know I will often eat most of my vegetables quite a few times a day because I do eat vegetables at breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Um, so when it comes to vegetables, You're amazing. I, wouldn't be concerned. <laughs> I wouldn't be concerned about what I'm having. Um, Shana? Thanks. Thanks. But um, yes, I mean, it's just, it's just that, just realising what do you want to be having. We're going to move, guys. You're going to come on the road with me. Hold up. Hi, guys. Hi. Yeah, so just keeping up the portion controls and whatnot is a big thing. And the only time I'll get you guys doing calorie counting is to make sure you're eating enough. Shana, can you hear me? You. Yep, can hear you. Okay, I'm on the move again, so hopefully I can hear you. You're saying you eat no your three times a day. I'm like, that's amazing. Oh, <laughs> well, I mean, it's quite easy when you're doing things like having um, a smoothie at breakfast. You could be adding into a smoothie, yeah. spinach, carrot, celery, cabbage, and um, some cooked pumpkin or sweet potato yeah. into a smoothie and some plums and some orange. There you go. You've already had a massive serve of all the good things. Yeah. You could then, you could then be having um, a frittata or um, a salad or a stew for lunch. Like I made... This week I've, I've got a, a chicken, a, a packet of chicken breast. I threw in all my veggies, leek. I had an orange. I threw in some orange skin. I threw in orange skin, leek, ginger, garlic, some garam masala powder and some laksa powder and a little bit of curry paste and a can of coconut cream and some Moroccan spice. And then threw all the vegetables I had in the fridge, including pumpkin, into the slow cooker. And I just turned it on with some cooked lentils threw it in there, let it cook down, and then came back to it, and I have an entire stew. Yes, as a diplomat, it's not necessarily the greatest, but that there, that hot pot that's full of vegetables and only a small amount of protein, I then actually grab my container and fill it full of um, leafy greens, and then I put a tablespoon or two of, and some like raw carrot, and then I grab that cooked stuff, and I put it on top of it like a, a sauce, 
like a, a filling sauce to go on top of the lettuce leaves and flavor them. So there you, you can see you've got so many ways of getting in extra vegetables every single day. Yeah, that, that sounds good. Uh, that's the idea. It's the prep and having it there, isn't it? Yeah, and I'm, I'm lazy. Like, I am so lazy. It took me 10 minutes to throw together all of that and throw it into the hot pot and then walk away, into the, sorry, into the slow cooker and walk away. Mm -hmm. And then I might have some cooked lentils. I do have a question. Why do I always have bags under my eyes and black, black, tired eyes? My question would come straight to how much sleep are you getting? Are you sticking to your chronobiology? Uh, probably not. Like I'm trying, no, I don't go to as bed as early as it suggests I should. Yeah. Um, I try to. Um, and then when I do sleep, it's still a little bit restless. So then how heavy probably are your dinners? because I haven't, beg your pardon? How heavy are your dinners? Possibly too heavy. So that can be happening too. I, so our digestion can cause the dark rings under our eyes. The poor sleep can be heavy digestion. Yeah. Like those things can all equate to it. And, so, eating, um, and eating too late. Um, I just heard something the other day. Somebody said, uh, eat your dinner two hours before you go to bed. I thought that was terrible. I mean, I've yeah. heard and thought for years that it's at least four hours and, um, and more if you can. It depends. Whatever. Activators can generally actually eat quite quickly because their digestive system moves very fast. An activator is fine to be eating and then going to bed quite shortly. A diplomat takes five hours to digest. So if I eat a heavy dinner around 8, 8.30, I'm still feeling it at 11 o'clock, 11.30 when I go to bed. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, um, but then it's also looking at it and going, well, what, what's going on emotionally for me? If I'm eating too heavy and too much, then what am I eating? Why am I eating it? And what's the emotions that are coming up for me inside that? So for me at the moment, I know it's lonely, dealing with the breakup, trying to rebalance myself, blah, 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 emotional turmoil. I'm wanting fatty, heavy foods at night time. And if and when I succumb to it, I know I suffer that night and the next day. Mm. So there's just what, yeah, what's well, going on and what am, I, what am I really needing? Um, yeah. So we're talking to Shanae earlier and, and I'll just quickly recap. Shanae's um, concern at the moment is she's, she's feeling anxiety and stress because there's a lot of judgment within herself and around and, and with people around her. And she's spending too much time actually concerning herself with what people may think rather than just being the happy, loving, go getting happy, go get a mother that she actually is. And she's allowing that disconnect to rule her life way too much, which is actually resulting in the weight gain, the stress, the anxiety and all of that. So it's not the food it's that. Yeah. So, just being clear of what it actually is and what's really going on for you and what you actually need more of in, instead of the, the crux, instead of the, the putting on weight or the eating the poor food or eating the sugary food or the reacting and getting stressed and snapping and snarling. Does that make sense? Oh, it does. I think the thing is I don't get to spend enough time you know, really um, paying attention as much as I am trying to pay attention to myself and what's going on. I'm so busy and mm. I'm trying to adjust one thing here or one thing there. So, you know, just by making that shift from just having a warm tea in the morning through to maybe a breakfast sort of strawberries and nuts and some yogurt, you know, 10 o'clock as breakfast is better and eating lunch late and um, and so you're actually the dinner. It's at the, the moment or you, oh, it's, the dinner. it's the dinner, did you say? 
Well, it's the, then sort of I get home and my husband's probably got dinner ready for the kids. So to try and have some quality time with them, I sit down and eat, sort of be grateful for what is there and try and lean towards the vegetables. Mm -hmm. um, but sometimes, you know, he serves food and there's nothing green to be seen. Um, so I just think I've got to make my own soup or something. So it's yes. light. I was going to say, what can you do to ensure that you're actually doing it and adhering to it and looking after yourself? So whether it is as soon as you come home, you grab a bowl of greens, of salad greens, and then you walk over to the dinner table and you pick a few things that they're having and sprinkle it across the top. Like if you had a mm. container full of a, a lentil, steamed green bean and steamed pumpkin salad um, with spinach and kale in it with a nice vinaigrette zesty dressing and you have that already made up in a big container and every night you come home and grab a big bowl of that or you know a small bowl of that and you might sprinkle a few things that they're having, sit down and eat it with them. That's called being self-responsible. Yeah. And that's what we have to do. It's what I know I'm going to do for the rest of my life in relationships and situations so that I can make sure I make the best choices. Yeah. Yeah, no, definitely. But I just yeah. really would like to have a full night's sleep. Yeah. So let's work on easing that digestion. Um, Easing that digestion. It's going to take about a week of really watching your digestion and what you're eating at night time. Uh, it may need to keep a food diary, but if you're anything like me, that won't work. <laughs> you know so hate keeping a food diary hate it yeah but it is so, good for someone like you to then reflect over it it is it it, i can then see even if it's just yeah. a, on a piece of paper that you scribble it on and let me know what you're having each night and send it across to me um the next day or a couple of days in a row um then i can sort of get an understanding of emotionally physically and mentally what's going on for you mm -hmm. okay well, I've just I've just had lunch and now I feel uncomfortable. <laughs> what did you I didn't have much it? breakfast. I just had a salad with vegetables and a little bit of chicken. Salad, but it was with cold. It was cold. Ah, there we go. I so really, you're in a. Sounds mm. to me like your body is in a reactive state. Your body's in a in a fight or flight state to me. So um, whether or not it's before you eat, make sure you, even if, and I don't agree with microwaves necessarily, but to get the stomach down, sometimes things like just slightly warming a meal to bring it mm. from cold. If you don't have time to pull it out of the fridge and let it sit for a little bit, if you don't have mm. that time, that's fine. Sometimes you actually have to then turn around, just warm it very quickly and then <clears throat> warm it very quickly um, and just, just consciously breathe consciously breathe yeah. before you eat the food so you're not in such a stress state hmm. does that make yeah, sense i mean i always in a rush to eat lunch i'm on a tight schedule i'm on a tight lunch break blah 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 yeah which is going to go on forever it's going to continue yeah we're always shana, going to be busy shana like you told me i bought those um those little containers you know, so that I could make portions and I could keep them and they're thermal so I can keep them warm. Um, also, another thing, I don't have anything um, raw and I don't have anything out of the refrigerator. Especially, yes. as, well, especially when I'm in some kind of a state, you know, when I'm out of balance whatever those are, those are things that take a lot of energy from my system and and so you know pick the low hanging fruit and that's it you know and and speaking of fruit another thing that really bothers me is fruit um uh when i when i'm in an unbalanced state when i'm balanced i can eat tons of fruit you know but so when you're unbalanced, the body can actually make you feel and actually will actually um, digest food in a really poor way. And it will actually cause a lot of distension. It'll cause a lot of bloating, a lot of reactivity, a lot of emotional instability, all of that. And of course, with the food combining, that, you know, the... Yeah, exactly. So those are some things Found that Katie, maybe... Sorry? Yeah. Okay. Go on. He here... Hearing that, what do you think are some things that may actually be a point of um, uh, a point of connection for this week? What do you think will be what you need to be working on this week? 
Oh, look, I just think it's the food preparation and having, you know, some nice flavours that I can enjoy, the family can enjoy and just having it at the ready. So it's going to be uh, this weekend I'm going to do lots of preparation and I'm going to avoid eating cold salads as much as I have. Like I didn't, again, I was short on time and I just, yeah, I just rushed it. But the other so thing is my you... husband my husband sometimes gives my kids I won't I refuse to eat fruit after a meal but because they so brought up on you know you got to have pudding after dinner like in mm. England we always had a pudding like so the kids are in this mindset that they've got to have pudding after they've eaten their meal um and he often gives them fruit. And I'm like, don't give them fruit. It just ferments on the food that they've just eaten. It's disgusting, terrible, blah. And then he just serves them fruit and ice cream. Yeah. I mean, it's better than having oh, the ice cream tips. I was going to say, if fruit's what they're having, that's better than all the other stuff they could be having. But you are correct. Fruit would be best to have before they eat the solid meal, before they eat the savoury dish. Um, but also warm teas. Um, lemon and ginger teas and things like that are really, really great to have to help the body to stop um, craving. Um, like a, a hot ginger or a hot mint or a hot lemongrass tea can really make a massive difference. I live on tea to try and stop myself from having things. All right. Yeah. And just out of interest, do you, do you use the oils in your teas and your foods and your things? I can't remember. No, I don't. I, at the moment with me going overseas and things like that, I've come off of every everything. I'm actually on bare minimum of everything before I, while I, I'm travelling so much. Yeah. Um, I'm just keeping it plain food um, and things like that. But when I come back, I will be getting some oils because I have nothing. Yeah. But even then, it's also remembering that because you are taking oils, you are getting a much stronger, more potent amount um, than most people would be having. And that can also cause gut ailments and things like that so it's just it, there's the, obviously a fine medium same with anything any medications or any supplements i take i'll take them for a little while and then i won't take them forever i quite often will um go through having things and then not having things yeah yeah to give the body an opportunity to self-regulate because we never ever ever want to become reliant on anything yeah apart from yeah. whole foods yeah so with your food prepping, what day are you going to do the food prep? Uh, probably on uh, Sunday. And are you going to That's go shopping be... on Sunday and get everything or do you need to go shopping during the week? Oh, look, it's just that, you know, we're all over the shop. We, we, it's very hard to have a routine in our household because I've got to take my daughter up to a swimming carnival in Moree on Friday and my husband's away. So I, I'll just... So could you take I'll, your daughter shopping with you after or on the way home? Yeah, yeah. So I can, oh yeah, I can easily take my kids shopping and stuff. But but I will, yeah, I will look at recipes this week and yep. then I'll decide on one or two things that I'm going to stock up and make for the family to eat during next week as well as myself. Awesome. I'd um, love you to send it to me. Send me a photo of it. Yeah, well, I might send you some of my ingredients and you might send me the recipe back. Yeah. Oh, I'll do a ready, steady cook challenge. Yeah. If you want to do that, post it into the group. And any of you can do this at any point in time. If you guys, oh, let's start it. Let's do a ready, steady cook challenge. Angela, if you're the same, you can send it through to me on WhatsApp and I'll send it um, across to the group. Um, so ready, steady, cook challenge. Um, I might actually do a post in the group as, um, with a picture. And so whenever you want to do a ready, steady, cook challenge, you'll post it there and then I'll create something as a response. I don't understand what, what it is. Can you stop sharing, so my, my you stop sharing your, my screen, my uh, thing and put yourself up there again and my, my, my understanding is that we can send or post a picture of, I've got these ingredients, whether it's from the pantry or the, the veggie cupboard or whatever, 
and Shana will take a look and come up with a recipe of what we can cook. Yeah. Over here in Australia, they have a TV show called Ready, Steady, Cook. And it's where um, all the, I'm actually doing a cooking class with Dominic. I'm actually good friends with Dominic now. Um, chef Dominic, she's amazing. She's a female chef. And she was a major contestant on the TV show. And so it's called Ready, Steady, Cook. And they get a bag of about five ingredients. And in about 30 seconds, I think it is, they have to go, you know, within like a minute, they have to look at the five ingredients and make three a three-course meal with those five ingredients. <laughs> and so... Um, that's something I'm actually really, really good at is someone going, Shana, I have these ingredients, make something with it. Which is yeah. what I say to a lot of my clients. Just get the top selection of things off of your food list and just make dishes from that. But, yeah. so would everybody like to do that? Would everyone enjoy if I would do that? Or I can even do a cooking class on that. I can actually probably grab those ingredients myself that week or um, maybe I'll... Maybe I'll type it and then depending on time frames, try and cook it if I have most of those ingredients. That's, a, that's mostly what I do all the time anyway because almost the only thing I eat is, is vegetables. I'm, I hardly eat, eat fruits at all and uh, I, I have spices, but I have my spice garden. So I just take something from my spice garden and eat each meal. And I eat salmon twice a week, chicken twice a week, and then um, sometimes um, tofu, maybe once, or that's on my list, and sardines. I mean, I hardly have any protein on my list either, so it's really easy. And then I just take four or five vegetables and either boil them. I've been boiling vegetables lately too, which gives it a different flavor and actually very, very good. I haven't been boiling vegetables for years, but someone mentioned it to me some months ago, and I've been doing that. Usually I'll, I'll stir fry or steam or well, boil. Boiling does extract a lot of the nutrients, but for you at the moment, Angela, it'd be good to see you do some juicing. So I've always remember to come back into your preparation section and have a look. Your preparation guide will give you an understanding of at this current point in time, what is the things that your body is best going to utilize? How is the preparation that your body is going to recognize the most? So for you right now, it's telling me you need a bucket load of phytonutrients and minerals because juices that are actually top of your list, steam foods, broths and spice waters and smoothies. Like this is, yeah. And smoothies, I'm still, I don't know. I have a mental block against smoothies. Without fruits, uh, they taste terrible, and I just don't like <gasps> them. Just think of it like a gazpacho. Well, I don't do gazpacho because I don't do cold. <laughs> no, no. But if, I mean, a smoothie for you, looking at your list right now, we're not going to be much longer. Thank you, everyone, for staying on. I don't have to go. Oh, awesome. Sorry. Okay, so looking, that's okay. So look at your list. It would be mint, spinach, blackberries. Mint, spinach, blackberries, cinnamon, hazelnuts, cacao, cooked pumpkin. Can I replace that? Can I replace that with some other squash? We can't get pumpkin around here. Yeah, 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 absolutely. So you got um, papaya? Can you get papaya? Yeah, lots, lots. I have that almost awesome. everything. Right. So you've got papaya. Papaya. Um, what did I say? Papaya, blackberry, spinach, hazelnut, cinnamon. Papaya, blackberry, cinnamon. Spinach, hazelnut, cinnamon, and cooked squash. And that's a smoothie? Yep. You want to write that one down or you want me to write it down? Um, well, I can. So it's papaya, blackberry, cinnamon, spinach, and hazelnuts, and cacao. And make sure it's a nice ripe one. 
I actually eat papaya almost every day and cacao almost every day and blueberries almost every day and ginger every day. I mean, I eat all those things every day. Um, Have you written that list down? What's that? Have you written that list down? I didn't understand no. you. Have you written that list down? I can't understand the words you're saying. Have, Have I you written that list of food down? Oh, papaya, blackberry, cacao, spinach. Hazelnuts and cinnamon. Okay. Now inside of that, you could easily hide uh, a small leaf. And I mean, like, if you, if you put three to four fingers side by side and grab that much of two layers of cabbage and put it in there, a red cabbage is nice and sweet, you wouldn't know it's in there. Yeah, that's a, low, that's a low FODMAP, and I've been eating a lot of that. I mean, that's one thing. That you were asking me about the distension, and I've gone on a low FODMAP diet. Of course, I'm trying to you know, pair that with my profile here, which is pretty easy. Mm -hmm. uh, so, so that's just telling me that let's try doing it as a smoothie and see how your body feels with that. Okay. Once a day? Um, or? What about a juice? Can it, do you have a juicer? Um, I think I do. But I've right. been in the cupboard for two years. <laughs> <laughs> so then I would be doing a juice with some spinach and some ginger, some celery, a lot of celery and cabbage, spinach, ginger, celery, cabbage. Pomelo. Spinach, ginger, celery, cabbage, pomelo. Pomelo. What's pomelo? Pomelo. I don't know that. Is that grapefruit? It's like a grapefruit. It's larger though. It's really, really big. It's as big as your head just about. Oh. I wonder if we can get that here. Hmm. Hmm. Okay. I'll check that out. Um... Celery will be really good. Some turmeric will be good in there. Yeah, I eat turmeric every day as well. I have fresh turmeric. Awesome. So make that into a, into a juice and have that because the cabbage juice and the celery juice are major, major, majorly highly good for detoxification, for digestion, for brain cognitive function, for fluid retention, you name it. Mm-hmm. And cancer fighting cells. Cabbage is massive for cancer fighting. So there you go. There's a juice and a smoothie. I'd love to see you take a photo and send it to me and I'll send it to the group. Okay. Awesome. So everyone has a challenge for the week. I want to say one other thing, if I might. Um, one of the things that Anne and I were working on was um, uh, the mantra is I, I have space in my life to be important i think that's it Ooh, anyway that's one for everybody that was yeah some of the things that you were saying earlier several of the gals here um yeah and when when she hit on that uh affirmation for me i mean it's like it changed my life i mean it's just like i kind of you know, sat back in my chair and I thought, oh my gosh, you know, this is amazing. Did you that, <laughs> and and uh, you two gals with families, with kids, you know, you, you, that's probably your input, your negative input to that. And my negative input is that I'm retired and living in a country where I don't speak the language. So I don't have any, and nobody thinks I'm important. You know, so, so so that you know when when she hit on that, like I said, when she hit on that, it was just like, oh my gosh, you know, and that was like, I don't know, just five or six days ago, and uh, I mean, it's changed my life. I wake up in the morning and I'm smiling, and I, you know, grab my knees and I do my little stretches in bed, and I 
think, oh my gosh, it's what I get to do today, you know, and I jump up and I, I mean, just that, you know, I have space in my life to be important. I, I don't think that's exactly the way she said it, but anyway, you get the idea. Yeah, I've just used that and put that into the group as a, as a post for everyone. That's absolutely perfect. Yes, marvelous, marvelous, marvelous. So it just mm. changes the whole perception, you know, from looking at it as I'm busy and, you know, they need this and they need that and someone else needs that and I have to do this, you know. Instead of looking at it from that perspective, it's like I'm, I'm important in my own life and I need to do my workout now. I need to rest now, you know, and I'm taking three, three 10 minute rests a day. I mean, rest, like mind rest, like rest, like nada, nothing, you know, and, and that has changed my life as well. Mm. Yeah, very, very, very good. So, so this is the 21 days with, you know, with the, with the medical stuff, with the skin stuff is, you know, has been the platform for me to just step back and do my day, do my life the way I want to do my life. Mm. And it's marvelous. It's great. I love it. You are doing so well. And, and I love that. I, I've actually just grabbed that and immediately posted that to the group because I think that that is super, super, super important. Mm. Thank you. That's an absolutely beautiful share and so relevant right now. Yeah, thank you, Anne. <laughs> yeah. So is there, and that's, and I think it is really, I think we might, um, I'll reflect on that again. I might even do a post about it, about our internal dialogue and remembering that what we tell ourselves is the things that we hear consistently. And that's then what we become like red car, red car, red car, red car, red car. Now all I see is red cars. I'm too busy. I'm too busy. I'm too busy. I'm too busy. Guess what, sunshine? You're too busy. Because yeah. the language that you're consistently using and allowing to be in your awareness that actually doesn't serve us. And I'm the same. I, I can totally, totally sit here right now and vouch for that and be like, I am the one that says I'm too busy. <laughs> and I'm really, really sorry, but I'm going to have to go. I've got to get Mackenzie early from school. So I'm really sorry, but I've got to jump off. No stress. No stress. We're about to end anyway. Hey. Thanks, beautiful. See ya. Thank you, buddy. Bye, Sinead. Hey. Yes, perfect. Did, did Katie leave too? Yes. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. So my last session with Anne was excellent. I don't. I don't think that I said anything to you. Just a, a few days before, three days before my time with Anne, this last time with Anne, I had my last session with Cat. You know the yes. the EFT element, and it was horrible. It was oh. absolutely horrible, and that oh. was number ten. And number nine was not very good either. In fact, in fact, when we had the tenth session, she started out by saying, "I want to talk about last time," you know, and then she just continued on. It was well. There's no point in going into all this stuff, but. I, I did say, I did go into some of the stuff with Anne, you know, and Anne said, what did she say? And I said, and she said this, and she said this, and she said this, and Anne's going, ah, 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 you know, I mean, she just, she's, she's uh, coming off of a very, um, very, I don't know what the word is, important or whatever illness uh she had c diff you know c, you know c diff yeah, yeah i've heard of it definitely it's killing people and uh she canceled several sessions during the the 10 it wasn't 10 weeks it was 10 times every other week you know but, but anyway um mm. and and so but now so she's supposedly well she's back into her practice and she's this and that but 
um, she decided that uh, what I needed was um, to be called on my shit, as it were. To uh, she, what I needed was um, tough love. Is that, uh, that's what the woman said, or is that what Anne said? That's what Kat said. That's uh. what Kat said. And uh, she just pounded me, just absolutely pounded me. Um, and to the point where she was unprofessional, you know, she would say to me, now I'm angry. It's, you know, it's like, and she was giving me you messages and all this. And, and I told her uh, on, on the 10th session, you know, when we were, she was recapping, she sat there for 10 minutes with her recap and gave me you messages. And I didn't ask her, I didn't call that to her attention and ask her to change that into I messages because it wasn't important that she tell me how she felt. She's, that, she's not supposed to be telling me how she feels. She's supposed to be working with how I feel, you know. And it's all meant to be about you. And because of my, um, my background with my critical mother, my, I mean, my real mother, you know, being critical and being verbally abusive to me uh, for 15 or 20 years, um, yeah. that was verbal abuse to me. And uh, it was horrible. And so coming off of that, um, I, you know, and Kat was saying to me, why are you lying to me? You know, I, yeah, I mean, it just, it, it was just incredible, incredible, you know, and my mind and part of my mind was going into a more objective, professional thing, you know, like listening to the you messages and the I messages and that, that kind of stuff. But of course, part of it was still staying in my heart and in my little girl and in my wounded, my wounded self, you know, and God darn. So anyway, um, I had written to Anne, and then two days later we had our session, and we only spent 10, 15 minutes on, on that. She wanted to debrief me a little bit. And, that, and that's part of where she came up with this, um, um, you know, that I came up with, I don't feel important, I, I don't... I don't feel like I have a purpose. I don't feel like anybody's depending on me to come through with anything. And I don't, you know, I don't have people. I don't go to work. I don't go to this. I don't go to that, you know. And part of this Toastmasters thing is, is really helping me with that. You know, it's giving me something to look forward to, a place to be responsible. And I'm loving it, you know. And I'm meeting I'm meeting these go-getter Colombianos who speak English. So, I mean, which is what I wanted to do, except I couldn't speak Spanish, so I, was, I couldn't go to the places where they were. So now they're coming to the place where I am because they want to better their English, you know? And mm. I mean, it's perfect. It's just, it's really, really nice, really nice. So anyway. I'm I'm just loving Anne to death, and um, she's so amazing. And just uh, yeah, well, these, it, she's right. It's, there's no need for judgment. It's more about understanding. We all have our inner child that needs to be seen and heard. Our inner child needs to be embraced. And just because we're acting out in our current situation doesn't mean that we're a bad person or it's a poor choice. It's just how we're able to deal. We're only doing the best we can with what we've been given. Right. Right. And I and I don't have a self confidence problem. I never have. Um, always, when when someone was, you know, the principal at school or the teacher at school or my mother, you know, going, no, don't act like that. Don't be like that. Don't, you know, I if if I felt I was appropriate. I mean, I was always. I would lash back at my mom and I would say, look. Am I stealing hubcaps? Am I taking drugs? What's so terrible about me? Am I doing anything that's hurting somebody else? 
just because you don't think I should wear a pink dress and I want to wear a pink dress doesn't make me a bad person. Or a bad kid or whatever, you know. I mean, and, I, and I've always internally felt strong in that regard. Yep. But, but at the same time, you know, now I'm coming to grips with this introvert part of me which is which is actually very wonderful you know mm. i was always kind of afraid of that growing up because an introvert was somebody that was that would hold back and was secretive and you know and i didn't want to be that person and i wasn't that person you know no. but, um, but now it's like this introverted part of me tells me that that's where I get my energy. I get my energy from inside of me. And that gives me full responsibility for the go-to. I go to me. I go to me. I don't go to them. You know, I don't depend on them. And it's it's freeing. It's freeing. Mm. Wonderful, that's wonderful. Things are going good. I just need oh, to get my babe. stomach flatter and you know, well, that, yeah, let's look at the smoothies and the juices for now and let's see how the body reacts great. with that. Great, 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 okay. great. All right, oh, beautiful. Donkey. Thank you for getting on today and making the time. Yeah, thank you very much. I'm going to go put some cool, cooling cream on this and go to bed. Ah, it's mm. just, it just burns and itches, but, but it's good. It's getting dry. It's getting dried up and, and uh, it's good. Good, good, good. good. Okay. Bye, my darling. Good night. Good night. Nice see you. To, nice to see you. Ciao. Ciao, Bella.